Yo, how's it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast. Today, where we are going to work. Wow, today uh, we're going to be recording our three key factors for the game upcoming this weekend against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm your host, Chris. I'm joined by my co-host, Parth and Jalen. Today, how you guys doing? So, uh, yeah, this this will be a pretty short episode, probably only about five minutes, ten minutes. Just each of us, I guess, just this. this, this wow, I, I I really need to learn how to speak, but. Uh, each of us will be discussing some uh, some key factors in this upcoming game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It can be any type of matchup. So uh, we're going to go around the table, each mention our own matchup, and then after that we're going to talk about some more key matchups that we think could be important and help decide the game on Sunday. Uh, Jalen, let's start with you. Who's your, who's your matchup going to be this week? Oh, thank God. I finally get to start first. So um, I'm going <laughs> to go with Trubisky versus the Bugs defense. Um, clearly, everybody in the Bears fan base, or outside of the Bears fan base, knows that Trubisky hasn't been the best quarterback. Um, he's not even been average. Well, in the uh, Seahawks game, he was average in the uh, Green Bay game. But um, we we really expect way more out of Trubisky. Um, yes, we get he's in the, um, a new offense, has a new coach, new pieces. Um, but we need Nagy needs to let him start throwing the ball. Last year he didn't throw the ball because he didn't have no receiver. But now you have the receiver. You have Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel. When um, Anthony Miller got, gets back from his dislocated show, you have him. And we, we just need him to throw the ball. Um, like me and Chris were talking about uh, before we recorded, golf is going off. Four and touchdowns in the first half. Four touchdowns in the first half against, against the Vikings. Half. Trubisky hasn't even threw three touchdowns in his career. In so a game. In a game. Let alone throw multiple touchdowns in one half. So yeah. I, I just want to. I just want to see that out of my quarterback. Yeah, I'm gonna pull off. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull up golf stat line right now. Uh, before we head on the parse part, do you have anything? I mean, just like generally to say about about that. What you think about as far as how important Trubisky is going to be this weekend. Goff has almost 300 passing yards and four touchdowns in the first half. What I'm asking you of Trubisky this weekend, of what I've asked of Trubisky for basically the entire year, is I'm not looking for five touchdowns a game. Um, at this point, when I when I look at Trubisky, uh, I think against the bad teams, we can get away with him being a game manager and being a bit sloppy because of how good our defense is. But against these teams like Tampa Bay, he's going to have to step up and he's going to have to play well if we want a chance to win because our defense can't hold off against such a good offense for the whole game. So when you think about it against Tampa Bay and you look at Jared Goff's stats right now, I'm looking literally for Trubisky to do a quarter of what's Goff's done in the first half. 125 passing yards, a touchdown, and have the defense step up. Maybe two touchdowns, but I'm not looking for him to go out and be incredible, but I'm looking for him to not turn the ball over and uh, not turn the ball over and I, I, I just score just be solid. We, we need to score. We, we can't settle for field goals against these good teams. I definitely agree with you guys. I mean, we've seen Trubisky show some great flashes now. All he has to do is put it together. Once they put it together as an offense, I mean, this offense can become unstoppable, yeah. just like this defense. I've been, this. I've been reading up a lot on Trubisky this week, and, and basically everyone that I've read about is saying the same thing. Everyone's saying they hope that this offense is going to unfold, but if this offense doesn't unfold, the Bears aren't going to be looking too good in a couple weeks because I, 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 this offense needs to start – Doing something, yeah, getting getting going in the next get couple get weeks, or point. yeah, um, so. yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. But uh, for Trubisky, uh, that was a good matchup. Parth, who's your matchup going to be this week? I'm gonna go with the Bears line versus the Buccaneers D line. I mean, the Bucks D line, in my opinion, isn't too bad. D line. I mean, they got Gerald McCoy, uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, Jason Pierre-Paul, exactly, and Levante oh, David. Sure. If you look at their front seven, yeah. I mean, they got a pretty good defense and not a big, solid defense, not pretty good. But I mean, in part, part, no, they yeah. do not. Their defense is absolute ass. No, I wouldn't say their I wouldn't say their defense is bad. I'd say their secondary, secondary, secondary. Yeah, their secondary is like the third worst in the league. But sexy don't I mean, or the, I mean, or their D line is pretty scary to me. And with our, I mean, our O line is one of the shakiest O line in my opinion. Like. They could have a really good game, or they could just blow. And like, there's times where they blow, and it's just so scary to watch, because Trubisky will maybe have one second in the pocket. Yeah, I mean, and then there's times where he has ten seconds, and he'll like do nothing out of it. But I feel like if they can give him enough time, 
to set him up for success this week against this weak secondary. I feel like he can air the ball out just like Jerry yeah, Goff today. Yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely, I, I agree. Um, I feel like with Trubisky, as far as as far as um, something that's really important for him and has been important for him the entire year, has been setting his feet. Uh, he hasn't really been setting his feet well the entire year. He's been getting a bit, I guess, like like uh, jitterish or, or giddy in the in the pocket. You could say. Uh, I know, like NFL scouts and stuff, they call it like happy feet, where where you just can't really plant your feet and step into a throw. Um, when when you look at his throws, the, obviously, or I guess th- this is just general logic, but any NFL quarterback can make their best throw when they're not under pressure and they can step into a throw and deliver the ball properly. So uh, I think I think that's going to be very important. I-, I like that matchup a lot. What do you think, Jalen? Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I'm trying to think. I was going to do Trubisky, but I, I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm just going to go with the Bears. I'm going to go with the Bears secondary and their ability to stop Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson, uh, and, and guys like Cameron Braid. Even um, looking at our secondary, we got torched by Tampa Bay last year, and we have a lot of returning players from that secondary. I think we have everyone returning from that secondary. Uh, looking at looking at how we stacked up this year so far, though, um, basically everyone in the secondary has been good except for Kyle Fuller. This is going to be a, another big game for him. Um, Eddie Jackson is the second highest rated safety in the National Football League, according to Pro Football Focus. He's been incredible. Amos has also been incredible. Eddie Jackson, as I just said, he's been incredible. I don't know why I just went back to him. Uh, Prince Makamura had the pick six and had a couple deflected passes. You look at the guys, as I was saying last night, who are going to need to step in the game. Kevin Tolliver might have to step up a little bit, but Sherrick McManus was looking pretty good. And then obviously you got Bryce Callahan, who had the pick against Rose, and he was looking pretty good. But... Uh, I think the ability to shut down the passing game, to frustrate Ryan Fitzpatrick, to force him into some bad passes is definitely going to be important. Uh, when you look at Ryan Fitzpatrick, obviously he's he's been playing really well, 400 yards in three-plus games, first time in NFL history. And he's had, he's had 11 touchdowns so far. But if you look at the second half against Pittsburgh, they uh, they did a pretty good job blocking up the receivers, and they forced some pretty erratic throws. So I'm going to go with that, um, just the ability to shut down the receivers. But I'm also going to say... Um, Following that is the offense's ability to step up off of turnovers is, is going to be a key factor in this game for sure. So uh, my my matchup is going to be uh, the Bears secondary, I guess versus Tampa Bay wide receivers. Yeah, I definitely agree with that because I mean Kyle Fuller has been getting torched, but lately and it's I mean it's not even his fault. Like some of them are just like perfectly thrown balls with like perfectly co- perfect coverage. But I mean this is the game where he's got to prove his money. I mean we gave him. Uh, Eight million dollars. Yeah, think it was like fifteen, fourteen and a half. I mean, I think he needs to like prove to us Bears fans that he's worth the money, and we're like, was he really worth the match, or like should have should we let him go to the Packers? Like, is that one thing we could have done? I mean, Kyle, if Kyle Fuller's gonna have a tough matchup, I think he's gonna be against Mike Evans this week, just because uh, I don't think Amuka Mara's gonna play this week. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, what did you say? Can you repeat that? Amuka Mara's not gonna play this week. I doubt oh man, speak. yeah, that, that that really puts us in a bit of a hole. If, if that, if yeah, he's not in that. You already confirmed to him. Uh, it's in your in this week. Yeah, uh, yeah. So looking at like um, it also I would like to say one person that I I think um, could have an impact on this game, and I'll probably mention him again later the, the later this week is uh, Javon Williams. He's gonna be activated for this game. I, I read today. Uh, he should see more snaps than Bellamy. He should see more snaps than Kevin White. So uh, I think you'll see 10 to 15 snaps in the game. And, and looking at how he performed in the preseason, he's got a big, lengthy build. Um, I think he could also be someone that could be very important as far as just, like, exploiting the secondary. They're the third-worst secondary in the league. Uh, I feel like if, if he could step up, if, if some of our lower wide receivers could step up, that'd be big. Also, Taylor Gabriel someone that I look at to step up. Uh, I don't think the Bears have used him right at all so far. They haven't really given him any opportunities to get down the field for some deep shots. With Conti out, um, and, and the Buccaneers actually didn't sign Eric Reed. I thought they were going to sign Eric Reed last night. He signed with the Panthers today. Um, I, I just feel like it's an opportunity. You, you gotta, you gotta let Mitch throw it in this game. I agree part. I think that was you that was saying it earlier. Any other matchups that you guys want to discuss? Anything, anything else you guys could find important? One thing I would like to say is, uh, I'm not, I'm not really looking for a big game as far as Tariq Cohen and Jordan Howard goes. Uh, they got a pretty studly front seven. I think, uh, their front seven in Tampa Bay is underrated. So I think uh, if we want to have a chance at winning this game, we're going to have to more focus on, on, on stretching the ball downfield vertically. I got it. I'm just interested in my job. Go, go for it. Um, the coaching. Derek Cutter versus Matt Nagy. Yeah, okay. Who coach the better game? 
Well, if it's it, it, yeah, it's just yeah, why can't I see his name? If it, it fits Magic, I'm gonna say that it's struggling with Ola, Dirk Cutter, put in Jameis for really keep keeping Fitzpatrick and, and well, Maggie calling good offensive play calling. Yeah, I've time. been. I will say if I can say something, I've been. I've been um pretty impressed with Nagy as far as like head coaching goes overall. I think he's been pretty solid. But from an offensive coordinator standpoint, the one calling the plays, I'm I'm fairly disappointed in that. I would say, that's, I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah, it's, not, it's more about it's not more about disappointment. It's more about opening the playbook. I'd say. I mean, I was. We, I mean, we, going into the season, we were all hoping for. I mean, like you said, an explosive uh, offense, and like we haven't seen the explosiveness so far. Yeah, totally. Just, I remember. I remember Trubisky saying in the beginning of the season, he's like. I love this offense because there's so many options, and if one thing doesn't work out, there's always another option. And just looking at that now, I mean, they're running like so many jet sweeps and so many screen passes and stuff. It's like, it's like, where is this creativity you were talking about? And, and and I mean, when you do slow down the plays and you look at some, Trubisky has been missing a lot of reads, so I, I understand where him him missing like those creative opportunities where their second and third options are. I think that's on him. I'd say more than anyone else for missing those oh, yeah. those options, but um. I, I, I do think opening up the playbook a bit more and, and not going all for all these simplistic plays. I mean, it, it's kind of like Shades of John Fox, but um, I've seen like the scripted the scripted drives have gone well, and Trubisky's been going to his, his second and third reads. But uh, once we get into the game where the drives aren't scripted, it, it gets a slight bit, slightly ugly to watch. Yeah, that's one thing we should talk about. Like, these scripted drives, I mean, the Bears have been scoring right off the bat. They didn't score in Arizona, though. Wait, what happened against yeah. Arizona? What happened? I forget. Yeah. In that in that first half, missed the field goal. Yeah, missed the field goal. And, but that was that was. I think that was also Trubisky's fault for losing like twenty yards on the play before. Yeah, he lost like ten yards. I was like, dude, just throw the ball out of bounds. <laughs> I remember I was watching yeah, that. Yeah, I was like, bro, uh, just throw Tariq it. Was literally Tariq was literally wide open in the flats. Yeah, well, he did have two people coming at him on block. He, he wasn't gonna be able to throw it. I think he should have thrown it out of bounds. But like. Doing like throwing it when there's like four guys coming at you is kind of impossible. It was yeah, it was two unblocked blitzers. Yeah, also, that's another thing that we're going to have to work on. I mean, dude, I, I saw the Blitz coming so much in that Arizona game, and the Bears had no answer to that. So I guess just, like, Arizona, the the, the, the offense's ability. Blitz of their defensive plays, though. Yeah. So, I mean, like, they're a Blitz-heavy defense. Yeah, but if you're Tampa Bay and you're looking at this footage, I would be inclined to Blitz, too, especially with how Trubisky's playing. Yeah, I mean, if they do Blitz, they're, I mean, you got to remember that their secondary isn't as well. So if we pick up the Blitz... You don't have, like, a Patrick Peterson to worry about. Exactly. So, like... It's either a win win situation or you just completely lose. I feel like the Tampa Bay's more of I mean, uh, David Cotter is more like a what's what's that like a simplistic coach where he thinks takes things slowly and like won't put jeopardize his team in that situation. So I feel like the Bears will have offensively one of the best games this season if they can Yeah. Uh you guys have any other matchups you wanna bring up? Anything else? No. no. I did. Okay, cool. Well, that's going to pretty much do it for this episode, guys. Uh, We will hopefully see you Saturday. I think we will see you Saturday for our pregame show. Look for some type of guest. We've been trying to get a guest on for a couple weeks. We'll have some type of guest on. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it. Postgame show coming to you after the game. Um, Man, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Any any last words, guys? Uh, It's all worth the wait, guys. It's all worth the wait. Yep, well, well, we hope. Yeah, Uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode of Bear Down Chicago. Peace. Peace.